Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's July 2nd, 2014. And let's get straight into our news tonight. Our top story, Obama's civilian security force takes control of migrant internment camps, abide by brown shirt laws. In the run-up to the 2008 presidential election, Barack Obama promised he would work to implement a domestic security force, which would rival that of the U.S. military. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. That was the president back in 2008 saying that in his own words. Many dubbed Obama's proposed force the brown shirts, a term often used to describe a Nazi assault force and one that was repeatedly associated with extremist nationalists. And if there ever was an emergency that required a military level response in the United States, many believe it's happening right now on the southern border as hundreds of thousands of immigrants make their way illegally into the United States of America. And according to an unnamed source who cannot provide video documentation of these events because cell phones were not allowed in the facility, a security force is reportedly calling itself the brown shirts. The insider says they have been given orders to arrest anyone speaking to the public or using cell phones and have implemented what is being referred to as brown shirts law. So that was from Max Lavo of the When It Hits the Fan report. And, you know, he can't so much uh, disclose the identity of this whistleblower, but I can believe that these things are going on because we've seen these, uh, these facilities with our own eyes. Now, personally, the facilities I saw, like the church facilities, they weren't so much internment camps, but you think about the FEMA camps back in, I guess it was Hurricane Sandy or so, the people were saying the conditions in the FEMA camps were like a prison condition. And also, we all recall Hurricane Katrina, the horrendous conditions there, people committing suicide, not enough water to, uh, to use, and also food shortages as well. And let's talk about this uh, domestic security force, because you recall back in 2012, we had the report, Homeland Security graduates first core of Obama's brown shirts, Homeland Youth. And it says this group was to be called the FEMA Corps. So there it is right back then. Uh, Obama wants this domestic security force. And when we have the most powerful military on the planet, why do we so much need a domestic security force? Why do we need Homeland Security buying billions of bullets? Why do we need Homeland Security shooting targets of little children? Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me, but I guess that makes sense in Obama's America. So it's not enough to have these internment camps. It's not enough to have these people training to take on the American people. Now they have to demonize you. Media characterizes anti-illegal immigration protesters as racist. A hundred or more protesters block the road into the Murrieta Border Patrol Station. The immigrants, many of them children, arrived by plane in San Diego from overcrowded holding facilities in South Texas. Uh, we've been told that the, the immigrants will come in 140 every 72-hour shift for several weeks with no definitive endpoint. Lynn Sparacino lives in Murrieta and is an immigrant from Central America herself, but her family came here legally. And she says others should too. And the thing that stuck out to me about that clip was you see somebody who said, hey, I came from these Central American countries. I understand what's going on down there, but you have to come the legal way just like I did. And as we were talking about earlier, the prison-like uh, conditions of these facilities, you see in the video, it seemed like very much a prison to me that these people were walking into. So you go from a country where I guess you would still have your freedom, then you come here to the United States only to be housed in these facilities where disease is rampant and you have other conditions as well. And I'm not saying that everybody who's coming here illegally is diseased. I'm not saying everybody who comes here illegally is a criminal, but you are not a criminal like an MS-13 criminal. Let me make that very clear. But you do have these concerns that you have to contend with, just like we see Border Patrol agents routinely getting sick, more and more reports coming out regularly about these guys contracting these illnesses that they didn't really have at their facilities before. So it is a very serious issue and I hope people will get over this political correctness. And no, it's not just the Central Americans. We'll have a special report later on tonight talking about how it's not just these people. We have people coming in from China, people coming in from uh, Middle Eastern countries as well. And how do they get here? They go to Mexico, they go to Central America, then they come up here and surrender themselves to the Border Patrol or even the more uh, wealthy ones they can uh, pay to have the coyotes ship them into the country. And we'll be talking about all that here in a little bit. Now. People have decided that they want their liberty, their security, and their privacy. 
we have 74% of Americans don't believe they have to give up privacy for security. Americans across the ideological spectrum believe they do not have to give up their privacy and freedom in order to be safe from terrorism, according to a new report from the Pew Research Center, which has always been true. But, you know, in this post 9-11 world, and let me give you guys a little hint out there, the younger viewers, terrorism did not originate on September 11th. 2001. It's always been there. It's been there in this country. It's been in other countries around the world. So it's nothing new. Gangs, by definition, the Crips, the Bloods, the MS-13 groups, those people are terrorist organizations by definition. So terrorism is nothing new. But they say, we have to keep you safe. We have to uh, fill you up at the airports. We have to have these Border Patrol checkpoints, even though it's nowhere near the border. We have to do all these things. We have to hack your phone. We have to read your email. We have to scan your Facebook page to keep you safe. It's not keeping you safe. All it does is data mines you. It uh, allows them to sell you products. It allows them to track your movements, uh, predict your behavior. That's all it does. It does not keep you safe in the least bit. Because you can notice, uh, think about the Christopher Dorner situation, regardless if you agree with the complete official narrative or not. Think about how one guy supposedly just shell-shocked an entire police department. They didn't know what to do. They were shooting at suspects who didn't match his physical description, shooting at vehicles that didn't match his car. They didn't know what to do, and the only thing they could do was burn that mother effort down. So let's talk about burning down the propaganda surrounding ISIS. ISIS is hiring judges, doctors, and engineers as al-Qaeda prepares for war against caliphate. The leader of the self-proclaimed al-Qaeda spinoff nation, forgive me on the name, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi in addition to a broad religious call to arms, so to speak, also beckoned workers with specific skill sets to present themselves for duty, namely those with military, medical, and managerial skills were urged to flock to the newly declared state in an audio recording released Tuesday. So we see ISIS or IS or whatever they're called this week with their five-year terror plot. They want to carve up the Middle East, they want to carve up Africa, and we'll see how far they get with this campaign. But somebody whose campaign came to an end was the L.A. County Sheriff's Office when they finally got some justice for people being locked into their facilities. Six in Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department convicted in federal jail probe. After a week of deliberations, a federal court jury in downtown Los Angeles convicted deputies of conspiracy and obstruction of justice. Those charges together carry a potential maximum sentence of 15 years in prison. And these are the type of stories that we need because we know there are bad officers. We know there are bad agents, uh, people in the military willing to do shady things. But these things bring to light the good aspect. Okay, yes, yeah, some people do bad things, but there are also good people out there to stop them. So good to you, L.A. County sheriffs. You guys got some other work to do, but good job on this. And our last story for the segment tonight, report. Virtually all food imported into the U.S. is not inspected by the FDA. An investigation by Fair Warning and the Investigative News Network found that Food and Drug Administration inspectors allow nearly all food imports to enter the country without undergoing visual examination. And some bullet points for you here. 15 percent of the American diet now originates overseas. About 50 percent of the winter fruits and vegetables are brought from other countries. And nearly all seafood eaten by Americans is caught in non-U.S. waters. And I'll be the first one to tell you that I'm not a fan of all things FDA. I'm not a fan of them saying that GMO is good and tasty and safe. But I think it is at least a good idea to visually inspect food that's coming in. You can say, hey, man, those zucchinis look weird. Or, man, that fish looks like it may have been sick. Just something because you go to the grocery store and you may encounter some food that looks a little off, but you assume that somebody at least checked it out. That's not always the case as we see here. So if you want to get some food that you know is good and tasty, you can go to the InfoWars Seed Center. You can find the InfoWars Seed Vault where you can get fruits, vegetables, medicinal herbs. It's all right there at the InfoWarsShop.com. Now stay tuned because after this break, we'll have a special report. The ranchers in South Texas give us their own words about how illegal immigrants are overrunning their land. And also I'll give you some of the more recent gun news. Stay tuned. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy 
and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund Infowars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. And welcome back. Let's look at some of the more recent developments with guns here in the United States of America. Gun rights expanding in several states, namely Indiana, Kansas, and Georgia. One piece of Indiana legislation will allow legal permit holders, including school staff, parents, and visitors, to have locked guns in their cars and school parking lots, which is a good deal for me. Let's go now to Georgia. The Georgia Safe Carry Protection Act, dubbed the Guns Everywhere Act, will expand the number of places where guns will legally be allowed now, including bars, churches, schools, and government buildings. And you notice we see the mayor of Atlanta, fresh off reports that he attended Bilderberg 2014, saying that he doesn't want you to bring your firearm to any city facility. So there you go, you're a Bilderberg guy right there. And now he's saying, no, no guns allowed in my city. We're not gonna have that, even though state law clearly says that you can bring your firearm into a government building or institution. Now let's move now. Bill would allow police to confiscate guns based on accusations alone. David Warren, taxpayers for improving public safety. Although we are consistently in support of regulation of weapons, our concern in this legislation is that it has significant constitutional deficiencies, which will result in significant litigation and will not be enforceable. And that's coming from the state of California, where even the gun control advocates say, hey man, these gun control laws are way too strict. In another place they're getting strict is Oregon, where they're now sending state troopers to investigate firearm purchase denials. The Oregon State Police are now dispatching troopers to gun stores when would-be gun buyers are denied purchases following failed background checks. So this is an issue. I know several people who have been denied at one point or another, but they were able to purchase firearms before and after. People in my own family, they go to the gun store and for whatever reason, maybe the guy types their information in wrong, it comes up with a ding. No, sir, we cannot sell you this firearm. Next week they go to a different gun store and everything's fine. And it's not one gun store versus the other. It's just the system isn't perfect. You have these flaws and dings in them that will uh, bring up a, a failed background check from time to time. And now they say they want to dispatch the police to come check you out. Hey, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, I noticed that you, you couldn't buy that AR-15 you wanted today. Uh, what's going on with you? And he's like, bro, I'm, I'm going home. I'm going to the gun store down the street. Maybe there's something wrong with uh, with the system. I'm like, no, 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 let's sit here. Let's have a little chat down and find out what's going on. I'm like, no. This is not a good idea, Oregon. Do not send your state troopers to go investigate people who uh, don't get the gun. But something that needs some investigating is why they had the complete freak out in schools when you eat your Pop-Tarts the wrong way. And now we see the article, Pop-Tart gun case still ongoing after second appeal fails. So basically, if you don't recall, this is a situation.